to begin with, we've got to make our quilt. Okay, so what we've got here, uh, there's a lot of these around at the moment, uh, possibly even where you are. This is a Canada goose feather, and certainly just across the road from where we are at the lake. Uh, there's a lot, lot of these feathers being shed, so I'll try and collect as many as possible and put them away for various uses, this being one of them. So um, the, the great thing about uh, the goose feathers is that they're quite sturdy, quite hard, uh, and they, the nib therefore will last a little bit longer. They are a little bit more difficult to cut, so it's always a good idea to have a really good sharp craft knife like this. I've actually sharpened this one this morning, so I'm not going to touch it. And what we want to do is have the curve, the natural curve of the quill, as the under part of our nib, if you like. That's the bit we're going to cut away. So when we're holding it, we hold it like that with a natural curve arcing back. And that uh, makes the nib more user-friendly. If we turn it upside down, then your nib is actually going to be pointing upwards instead of downwards. And of course you can use this for writing as well as uh, for painting with. So there's my curve. Now the first thing I want to do is just cut off an angle. Cut off an angle there, about 40, 45 degrees, something like that. It's not critical. So hold it steady, cut into it, and then we'll find out how hard this quill actually is. And the answer is very hard. There we go. Once, you, once we're in, we can just slide the knife down. So this knife is actually ultra sharp, like I've said. There we go. So we cut a, a, an angle to begin with. We need a little bit more off on that, and that's the idea. We need to shave off a little bit more as we need it. So once we've got some of that off, you'll notice that uh, inside there's the, the quick. Uh, that's a little long piece of Quick, right fingernail quick, just tucked up inside that core. So we need to get that out, just pull that out with a knife and get rid of that. We don't need that bit. So you can see now we've got a little sort of hollow in there. Uh, don't worry about the end at the minute, we can fashion the end shortly. What I want to do is gradually work that down almost to a, a point along the side there. So first of all, make that angle quite long so it's like a little canoe shape almost okay and then what I'm going to do is about halfway down there I'm going to shave up a little bit more so it's gradually working to a point and you don't have to make it even both sides you know it depends it's only sort of um, Aesthetical, I guess. So it doesn't need to be symmetrical. Um, what I like about this whole technique is that rather than just using a, a pen that you bought, when you make a pen like this, you're never quite sure what it's going to do. Okay, what kind of mark it's going to make. It's got slightly less control than a fountain pen or an ordinary nib pen, which makes it more fun. and uh, can really, you know, add some kind of natural textures and lines to your painting, your artwork, and indeed your writing, that otherwise uh, would be too controlled, I think. So that will do for that. Next thing I need to do is uh, square off the end, get rid of this sort of lumpy end there. So again, press on. Okay, press on really, really hard. There you go, that snapped the end off. So you can see the end is nice and square now. And finally, what we need to do is cut a, a line, only about a quarter of an inch in this case, from about there through to the end. And that will help to store the ink as you dip it. So if you just use uh, the, for example, if you just use the end of the feather like that, you're not going to be able to store any ink with it. And that's the whole idea of cutting the nib shape. So again, let's take the knife, score a line down there, press on a little bit. That's quite an effort. 
And if you mess up, don't worry, because you can always cut that bit off and start again a little bit further up. You've got quite a lot of coil to play with. I'm going to try it at this angle now. There we go. So it's gone through. So it's a little bit skew with, but that's okay. Because now what I can do is shape down towards that. And at this point, you can actually make your nib as fine, uh, you pointed, or as broad as you want. And it's nice to use sort of varied nibs. So I've got uh, one or two different quills that I've made. Some of them have a fine end of the nib, if you like, and others a little bit broader. So we can see the difference shortly. And so I've got a medium one. So I'm just pairing off the sides down to that little point there. Uh, at, this, at this stage, if it's looking a little bit rough, don't worry, all you need to do is have a little bit of fine sanding paper and you can smooth it down. So that's what I'm going to do now. Just smooth the edges, soften them a little bit. You can even actually refine your nib with the sandpaper as well. Take off any floating bits like that, pop that on there. Make sure it's nice and smooth. Otherwise you could leave it rough, of course, you know, you don't have to smooth it. As I've said already, sometimes a rough nib will give you fun, sometimes exciting results. So let's have a look at that. Maybe we just want to square off that end a little bit more. You see it's maybe got a little bit of a rounded end there. And of course this is something you can do at any time. Uh, that's better, a little bit more square. So that's a kind of average size nib. Now what I've got here uh, is a little bit more of a point. You can see this one's been used. It's got a slightly finer point which is ideal for doing some sort of fine lines, uh, lettering and so on. I have another one here that I made earlier which is going to I left it quite wide as you can see. So that's going to be useful for doing broad strokes.